Is our Earth safe? Massive spike detected in solar activity by Russian scientists. When directed towards the Earth, powerful bursts of energy from the Sun's surface, the solar flares that is, are capable of causing mass geomagnetic disturbances, burning out man-made electrical and communication equipment, and even the power grids, and even leading to higher incident of cancer. This is today's uh, article Sputnik. Solar activity increased substantially in recent days as the sun continues to consume the fuel from the previous solar cycle. Monitoring by the Moscow-based Laboratory of X-ray Astronomy of the Sun indicates. The statement said, a sharp increase in solar activity has been observed over the past 24 hours in space monitoring equipment providing information about the flow of solar X-ray radiation. The lab, part of the Lebedev Physical Institute of Russian Academy of Science, noted in the press statement, and according to the scientists, monitoring from recent days, March 20th to 21st, registered three C-class solar flares, powerful bursts of solar energy, which thankfully usually have little to, to no effect on Earth, Furthermore, for the first time in several months, the Institute's index of flare activity showed an increase from green to yellow danger level with peaks uh, reaching 3.6 on its 10-point scale. Researchers noted that a spike in solar activity, which was clearly visible in photographic observation, included a bright emission of light created by hot hot plasma emanating from the sun's surface. Astronomers attributed the spike in solar activity to the sun's burning out of the remainder of its quote-unquote fuel from the 24th solar cycle. They said such fuel indicates magnetic fields which are formed under the sun's surface and are carried by streams of plasma towards its surface together with excess energy. It's this energy that is then burned out in the form of flashes, or what we call sunbursts or sun flares. The astronomers expect the formation of solar cycle 25 to begin near to the sun's poles, but have indicated that the cycle has yet to give any indication of appearing. The researcher said it remains a mystery as to why the magnetic field of cycle 24 remain present on the sun even seven years after the cycle reaches maximum in 2012. When sufficiently intense flares of solar energy threaten to cause extensive damage to man-made infrastructure from spacecraft and satellite instruments in near-Earth orbit to entire power grids on the planet itself, particularly during periods when the magnetic shield normally sparing Earth from deadly solar and cosmic radiation, is in a weakened state. In 2011, the U.S. National Academy of Sciences calculated that a repeat of the major solar storm, like the one which struck the planet in 1859, could lead to $2 trillion in initial damage alone and take up to a decade to repair. Can you imagine? Cycle 24, the current solar cycle, began in January 2008 and has the lowest recorded sunspot activity since record-keeping began in the year 1750. Cycle 24 was initially expected to end in mid-2018. And recently there were, were other articles, the sun is a sun about to explode. NASA detects weird activity on solar surface. This is by Henry Holloway of the Daily Star. NASA detected bizarre activity on the surface of the sun with a series of colossal solar storms. So, in effect, uh, they were uh, finding the same uh, conclude. They're coming to the same conclusion as the Russian astronomers. NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory 
monitoring strange activity on our nearest star, the Sun, and have been left scratching their heads. Activity on the surface of the Sun should be at its lowest point as a sphere of what's known a solar, solar minimum. The Sun is currently on an 11-year cycle where solar storms increase and decrease in intensity with the most recent beginning in 2008, lasting until 2019. But while we are in a dip and should be seeing less activity on the star, the Sun has been more active in the past few weeks than it has in years. So NASA is wondering why it's detecting such strange activity on the surface of the Sun. Astronauts on the International Space Station in the meantime had to hide inside their ship on Sunday due to an eruption from the Sun. While this is very unlikely the star is about to explode, NASA is keeping a close eye on the what is going on at the center of our solar system. It's not known what causes these large eruptions during the period of solar minimum. The sun is not set to die for another something like five billion years and it will not explode, but instead swallow the earth up before shrinking again and fading out of existence. Solar storms, also known as space weather, are huge eruptions of intense radiation from the sun's surface which interfere with electrons and radio signals on Earth. Massive explosions with the power of millions of nuclear bombs send the radiation hurling through our solar system. A big enough event could knock out power grids, fry GPS satellites, and plunge mankind into the dark ages. The current solar cycle began December 2008 and is now decreasing in intensity and heading towards solar minimum, according to NASA's statement. This is a phase when each such eruptions on the sun are increasingly rare, but history has shown that they can nonetheless be intense. And now I'll leave you a link to the space weather site so that you can see for your own what is coming up. We have the solar minimum here, but even now strangely beautiful auroras are dancing around the poles deep inside the Arctic Circle. The expert guides of Aurora holidays in Utsjoki, Finland can help you chase them. But now what's coming in? March 27th, tomorrow, co-rotating interaction region. Tomorrow, the 27th of March, a co-rotating interaction region, CIR for short, is expected to hit Earth's magnetic field. CIRs are transition zones between slow and fast-moving streams of solar wind. They contain density, density gradients, and compressed magnetic fields that often do a good job sparking Arctic auroras. Springtime cracks in Earth's magnetic field could amplify the CIR's effect. So we have all, all the aurora alerts. You can get them on text and email if you want. The afterglow of a CME, a coronal mass ejection, hit Earth's magnetic field on March 24th, and the impact was weak, did not spark a geomagnetic storm. It did, however, cause wonderful auroras. You can see the pictures of them here in uh, space weather. Also, we have the current auroral oval, and it uh, takes up basically the whole of Quebec over Canada. Uh, I don't think you'll be able to see it over New York, for example. But uh, I was lucky enough when I did live in Canada in Montreal to see Aurora Borealis and Northern Lights. It was a winter night. I think it was, a, I remember it was a Friday night, and it was absolutely beautiful. A shimmering, quiet, a blanket of colorful rainbows above our heads. Uh, and they seemed to be quite low, <laughs> but they were beautiful. So if you're there, uh, hopefully you'll be able to see them. The solar wind is a speed 351.4 kilometers per second, density at 17.7 .7 protons per square, a square centimeter, and X-ray solar flares, six hour maximum on March 26th, from AO2359 sunspot and 24-hour A90658UT on March 26th.
You can have more explanation and data on that, on the current conditions of space weather that is having to do with our solar flares inbound. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.